So I went from $1,000 a month to $5,000 a month in a span of about 60 days. Cause I kept telling my telling people I'm a virtual assistant, and then I began to brand myself that way on Instagram. Pause. You went from making a thousand dollars a month to five thousand dollars a month on the side, on top of your nine to five job. Correct. Simply by doing virtual assistant work. Correct. What's happening? No captain. We went AO, about to get a play oh, pull up to the table. Let's go. In today's day and time, I think one of the greatest things that we have before us is the strength of um, our queens. And when I say our queens, some of y'all may say, what do you mean queens? I'm talking about our ladies. Uh, the women in today's day and time are rising um, quickly, um, effectively, um, and just creating a lot, a lot of noise in the industry. Uh, these are ladies who are working full-time jobs, being a full-time mom, um, being a full-time wife, some of them being a full-time girlfriend, some of them, um, and even starting a full-time business. And while working all this, still eliminating debt, still um, living below their means and building something of substance. And in any time I can uh, get one of those, one of these amazing ladies uh, to the table, I'm always going to do that. I've had amazing ladies like this at my table from uh, probably, uh, to name a few, Ellie, um, Ellie Talks. You have Terry. Um, who else have I had? Uh, Jamisa, 28-year-old with 28 properties, debt-free. Um, I mean, I've had some great ladies come to the table. My girl, Nona. Uh, we just had my girl, um, Eric, Dr. Ariel Ellis, on the show. I mean, I've had some amazing queens on this show. And y'all pray for me, because, I mean, I've had these amazing queens on my show, and I still ain't got one myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, but, you know, I always, I love to highlight these amazing ladies because I love what they're doing and I love what they're building. And today, man, I'm, I'm really excited to um, have this amazing, amazing lady uh, at my table because she's young. She's 31 years old, single, brothers, you know, um, uh, and she, uh, you, you have any kids? I don't. No kids. And, um loves God, and she's sharp. She's just a sharp lady. Um, her name is Annalisa Abel. That's her last name, right? Abel. Abel. See, I got the first name right. Annalisa <laughs> Abel um, is in the building today, and she is a, check this out, a full-time worker and a, and a part-time, full-time business owner. Um, so before we get to her show and really get to this amazing story of hers, because we're going to dive in. We're going to talk about business. We're going to talk about the industry. And we're going to talk about singleness. You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about relationships. Because she said she's been on a lot of good dates. But she's still single. So we're going to talk about that. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? We're going to talk about it all. Because she's making the bag, y'all. She makes well over six figures. Um, and she says she's been on some amazing dates, but just still single. So I'm, I'm, I can't say I've been on some amazing dates, because they were like a lot of amazing dates. Brother man wouldn't be saying, I'm going to be real. But she said, hey, <laughs> so we're going to talk about it. But before we get to my sister, my, my friend here at the table, man, um, I want to remind you all that one of the things that are very, very important when it comes to building wealth and creating a legacy uh, for your children's children's children and to leave something to your wife or to your husband is life insurance. Um, I cannot stress enough how important life insurance is. If you're 25 years old with a child, if you're 30 uh, with a child, if you're married and you have some form of someone who you love in your life, you need life insurance. Um, do not die. Go to heaven. You're peaceful. You're, you're, you're joyful. You're happy. And you look down and your family is struggling. Your family is crying. Your family is wondering how are they going to live? Your son or daughter can't go to college now because half of that family's income is gone. Now listen, I want you to be wise. And I know it's an uncomfortable conversation to have. It is, it is definitely hard to go sit down and to um, apply for life insurance that doesn't benefit you today, <laughs> but it benefits the ones who you love when you pass. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. And so I want to encourage you to go check out my friends over at Ethos. You can go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash ethos. Um, that's anthonyoneal.com forward slash ethos. I want you to check them out uh, because you don't have to take any blood work, no doctor visits. You can get to a $2 million policy within a matter of 11 minutes. Just answer a couple of questions and a matter of 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks. You can be fully insured today. And can you imagine what can happen um, if you were to pass and you leave your loved ones with that? 
You can send them off to college. You can pay off homes. You can set up them some things where they can start a business simply by thinking about them after you leave. To me, that's true love. And if you don't do it, that's true selfishness. I don't have any kids. I don't have a wife yet, but I do have life insurance to make sure that my family can take care of me and they can mourn my passing. Cause listen, as much as I don't want to leave this earth, when I do, I'm with God, you know what I'm saying? I'm happy. <laughs> and I want my family to be able to enjoy, um, not enjoy, but celebrate me in a good way. And it doesn't cost them nothing financially. So check out my friends over at Ethos. It will take you 11 minutes and I promise you it will impact your kids and your family's life when you're gone. To me, especially as a man, that's true love. Because I'm thinking about my wife and my kids. I just got one rule. You know what I'm saying, Annalisa? She can't take my money and give it to another man. That's fair. And if I give all these millions, she going to spend it before she get married again? Okay. Or she got to give it all to the kids. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> don't give it to another man. I don't want another man to have my hard work. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll be in heaven like, God, that ain't even right, God. <laughs> fix it. Fix it, Jesus. Like, Jesus, I need you to come down there. I need you. Send an angel, God. Send an angel. That's a, as a matter of fact, I'm an angel now. Let me go down here. Hey, that ain't right. But, yo, welcome to the table, y'all. Hey. Man, you are all right with me. You know? Yes. Annalisa Abel. Yes. You got me. Abel. Because you are able to do all things. Yes. Take us to church real quick. Ah, my mm -hmm. God. <laughs> My God. <laughs> She's able, y'all. And clearly you're able because you're doing it right now. I am. You know what I'm saying? So let, let's, let's start from the very beginning. Let, let's be real. You're 31 years old. Correct. Make well over six figures. Yes. You work a full-time job. Mm -hmm. And you run a full-time virtual assistant business. Yes. Teaching people how to be VAs, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Right? No kids? I don't have children currently. I am a dog mom, though. I'm a dog daddy, too. Mm -hmm. But well, I ain't guess. kids. Okay. Yeah, but I feel you, though. I have Raven. That's my girl. Um, you know, uh, so no no actual human being kids. Correct. You a dog mama, though. Yes, DeMarcus. Um, still single, but you were engaged. Yes, many okay. years ago. Many years ago. What did you say many years? Like I how? mean, it was like four years ago, I feel like. Okay, okay, four years ago. Okay, four years ago. Uh -huh. uh, so you made the bag. Um, you're traveling. Okay, cool. Let's go from the very beginning, right? Okay. Uh, let's, go down to your, let's go down to your upbringing real quickly. Um... Your parents still together? They are still together. Talk to us a little bit about your upbringing. Like, what, how did your parents talk about money? Did your no. parents talk about business? Like, what was your upbringing? So, shout out to my parents. They just celebrated 38 years together. Of marriage? Of marriage, yes. So, Come on, mama, daddy. My parents, awesome. We never talked about money, though. We never talked about money or entrepreneurship. Mm. Um, but I don't fault them for that. They taught me what they knew. Okay. They didn't know finance financial yeah. literacy and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot of that on my own, but I learned I learned a lot of that based on lack. Yeah. I was aware of things that I didn't have growing up. Right. Um, and I also were, was able to kind of see our lives improve with my parents. Wow. I mean, two incomes in the household. It was doing, I was doing a lot better than a lot of my peers. And that was very obvious growing up. Um, so we went from living in one room all together, four kids, to us having our own rooms, basketball courts, swimming pool, all of those. So I seen them work hard, um, but they didn't go to college. Okay. They weren't business owners. Okay. They were just providing for their children, just a life and a different experience. So I did appreciate that. So I took what my parents taught me and then just took it to another level and escalated it. So. Um, I always know I wanted to live a really nice lifestyle. And people follow, if you follow me on Instagram, if you tap into my webinars or uh, my lives, I always say, God did not create me to live a basic life. Mm. There's no sense of me that wants to live a basic life. So if I can have more and I just have to work to get there, then I'm going to do that. Mm. I like that. God didn't create you to live a basic life. Correct. And whatever basic is for someone, I know it's going to be different. But for me, I want the best of the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I deserve the best of the best. I mean, if you work for it, you definitely do deserve mm -hmm. it. You know, and I think sometimes just to piggyback on that statement, which is uh, such a true statement, I really do believe in some people get offended when I say this. Um, and I heard someone say this. Um, he was like, yo, if God gave you a million dollar idea and you're only living a basic life off of the idea, you're actually disappointing God. Absolutely. Because now you're robbing from his plan. Absolutely. And if he gave you a million dollars, that means that he wanted at least 10% to go back to the church. So if you're not creating 
that million dollars, which sends $100,000 to the, to the uplift of the kingdom and to the church, then now it's not about you and, and, and your idea. It's like, yo, you're not doing what God has actually assigned you to do. Mm-hmm. And so living that life, like you said, like God didn't create you to live a basic life. I, I agree. We in the kingdom should not live a basic life. We should be wealthy. We should be impactful. We should be influential. Absolutely. I, could, I agree. I feel like most people don't, they're not living their full potential anyways. Mm, yeah. I think, I mean, even if, me personally, if I thought I was going to live like my full potential, I don't think I'll ever get there. Like if I'm giving 200% every single day, I'm not doing that right now and I'm getting great results. Mm. So what is that going to look like if I gave 200% every single day on the ideas that God gave me or the ideas that I dream about at night? Um, right now I'm giving, you know, 101%, we'll say that. 101? We'll go with 101%. I think you're giving them 80, but I, I hear you. 80? <laughs> 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 you might you might be right. It, I'm just best. I'm just best. You killing. You winning. <laughs> you, you are you are impactful. Um, so let me ask you this question because today where you are now with your virtual assistant business and you're helping people um, use s- skills that they're already using every single day on their jobs mm-hmm. and turn that into a six figure business. Absolutely. Um, from home. Have more time with your kids, more time with your loved ones, more time to do what you want to do while still serving and helping people, and you got a full time income. And y'all, just so you know, she de- she is offering a course. We are going to uh, provide that um, link today. Very affordable, even so much affordable that I'm actually buying it for my assistant uh, because the information that she has inside this course is life changing, um, and I think that you all will definitely benefit from it. But we'll drop the link in uh, today's show notes for that course today. So make sure before you leave, check it out, because I'm telling you, it's absolutely amazing. <clears throat> but what made you want to go into the VA side of things? Was your mom a VA? Was your dad a VA? No. So four years ago, I didn't even know what a virtual assistant was. When I think about a virtual assistant, I think about, like, Siri on my cell phone. Like, that's that's, that's what, what I thought about. Saying. Okay, okay. So for me, it just kind of fell in my lap. I was really in a place where like, I was investing in real estate. I'm doing okay within healthcare management. Like, that's what I went to school for. Um, I'm invested in the stock market. And I'm just like, what? I really feel like I needed something to kind of take me to the next level from a financial standpoint. And like when you look at all these stories of these highly successful people, multimillionaires, all of them had a business Mm -hmm. of some sort. And I was just remember just like, what is my like, what is my business going to be? Because I feel like I'm good at a lot of things. But is it something I want to consistently do? So the virtual assistant space actually just fell into my lap. So the way that I got my first client, we had mutual friends on Instagram. I mean, at the time, I would go on live regularly, just have financial conversations with real estate investors, people who invest in the stock market, other entrepreneurs. But I wasn't even an entrepreneur myself at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like growing my following by having these these um, Instagram lives. So my first client slid my DMs and just asked, hey, do you do any admin work? That's all he said. And I was just like, sure. Like, my background, I mean, I have a master's degree and everything. So, I mean, I'm pretty qualified to kind of do the work. Are you educated, educated? I mean, I do, you know. Black sister, educated, educated. <laughs> you still got student loan debt? No. Come on! We don't let, do that. Let go! Let's we run, don't do that. Let's no. run this play. What would you say? She said, oh, no, we, we, we don't, nah, we, we don't, we don't was, do that. I was very strategic even when I was an undergrad. I, I left with, like, less than 15000 Are you serious? Yeah, I only took out a loan because I was studying abroad, but it was, I mean, it wasn't necessary. I was on scholarship. You was on scholarship? We a little bit smart over here, okay? <laughs> we, we a little smart, okay? So, yeah, I was on, I had a couple of academic scholarships for undergrad and grad school, so. For real? I barely came out of pocket for grad school either. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, did you take the job for, for him? Uh, the admin work? So, yeah. So, he reached out to me via DM. Um, and then I was like, so he paid me before I did any work. So, that was a good sign, right? Okay. I was like, okay, this is a real thing. So, after working with him, I mean, I'm doing a lot of work on my phone, sending emails on his behalf, posting content on his Instagram account. And after my first month, I was like, I made $1,000 and I didn't really yeah, do much. And I didn't have to leave my home. And I always had multiple strings of income. So, at this time, I had my 9 to 5. Um, my tenants are paying in a timely manner, so that's good. Um, but in the past, I've had, like, worked at a retail job where I was like, that's my fun money for, like, vacation. Mm-hmm. I got something now. I don't even have to leave my house. Mm. If it's snowing, if it's raining, I can still get work done for clients as long as I have a laptop and Wi-Fi. Mm. So after that first month of making $1,000, I was just like, 
let's make this a real virtual assistant business. What happens if I put myself out there and let other entrepreneurs know that I have a virtual assistant business? So I went from $1,000 a month to $5,000 a month in a span of about 60 days because I kept telling, my, telling people I'm a virtual assistant and then I began to brand myself that way on Instagram. Pause. You went from making $1,000 a month to $5,000 a month on the side, on top of your nine to five job. Correct. Simply by doing virtual assistant work. Correct. All right, pause. I hear the money. I, I, I hear y'all, I'm going there. <laughs> I think a lot of people need to know what is a VA. For sure, Because yeah. I think a lot of people are like, okay, wait, is that just emails? Because I also heard you say, hey, I post things on social media. Mm -hmm. And so I, I know that VAs come in a broad sense of way, but like basically, what is a VA? So I would describe a VA similar to a personal assistant, but you're working at the comfort of your own home. Okay. So you're completing small tasks, administrative tasks, um, it could be technical support as a virtual assistant. So basically you're an assistant and you're working virtually. So I have clients that I've never met in person before because they live in a different city, they live in a different state. Um, I started my business in Cincinnati, Ohio. I never had a client in Cincinnati, Ohio. Never? Never. They may have been in California, Texas, um, DC, hmm. all, all across the United States. So I tell people this is an opportunity for you to make money basically from anywhere. So I've taught people across the United States, but there are also people who live outside the country of my program too. Yeah. So just think about making an additional stream of income. You have your Wi-Fi, you have internet, and you likely already know how to do some of this work. You're probably either doing it for yourself or you're doing it with your nine to five. So a lot of people sleeping on the skill set. They can monetize their skill set today. No, I agree with you because when I first stepped out on my own and started my business full time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, one of my mentors said, all right, here's what you need to do. You need to hire a VA. Mm -hmm. I was like, a VA? Like, what, what is a VA? Because I never heard of that because I was in the corporate world. Right. right? So everything is internal. You got assistance right there. Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, all right, to save money, hire a VA that can help you out with emails and social media. Hire a VA that can even do graphic design for you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. And then he gave me a company. All the VAs were in the Philippines. Yep. And they were much cheaper. No disrespect, I think you can get some great ones over there, but you gotta do a lot of surfing. Absolutely. Um, and then the English is hard. Then they work on the opposite hours. So to hear that you're teaching people how to do that here locally in mm -hmm. the States, that's in the same time zone, that understands your English, and the skill set would probably be just as good, if not better, than the Philippines. Yo, this is, this is a gold mine. Absolutely. And that's what I always tell people, because the first thing they mention is, how are you making that much money? I can give me a Philippines for $5 an hour, mm -hmm. you know, outside the country, which mm -hmm. is fine, but I always tell people cheaper is not always better. It's not. And in my personal experience, I haven't had great experiences with international VAs. Mm -hmm. Do I want to save costs? Absolutely. I'm a business owner. Right. But I also, quality is better for me. Absolutely. I want to make sure we're not con continuously duplicating work for a lot of our, our high quality clients. So for me, my virtual assistant agency, so I'm the owner. Right. I technically don't work one-on-one -on -one with clients anymore because I've been able to grow my business so quickly and scale it so quickly. So all of the virtual assistants that work under me, they now look like me. And mm. They all live in the United States. So when mm -hmm. people are coming to Elevated Assist, my virtual assistant agency, Come they're coming down. for a certain experience, right? We're, we're not having questions in, about grammar or, you know, defining certain words. We can speak their language, and we know a little bit more about their business. But also in regards to systems, um, having access to certain systems that may not be available outside of the country. So it's also good for international VAs to make sure the clients that they work with the thing, everything is compatible across the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I, I, I like that. So when you say a VA, right, and they all look like you, uh, are we talking about like black sisters? All black sisters, currently. I've had guys that work work under me before, but we need to do a photo shoot, honestly, because we, I got some baddies a, a part of the team, okay? For real? Some baddies, yes. Elevated assist. <laughs> I can, Photo shoot coming soon, okay? I, I can help elevate one of them. Okay. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yo, no, no, no. Okay, okay. I love that because it's like, now look at what you've done. You've taken your skill set, started the business, grew that business, yeah. and now you're able to employ other minorities. Absolutely. And it feels great. Absolutely. It feels great. Um, everyone who's on my team other than one is, is black. Mm-hmm. 
black ladies, black men. Um, and it feels good. And it's nothing against my white brothers and sisters, you know, because um, I think when I say that sometimes I offend, I offend my white brothers and sisters, but it's like, hey, I want to bring my wealth of knowledge um, and access back to the black community. Absolutely. Because the black community, we lack in that area. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I'm not saying white people, there are white people who are not lacking in it, but studies and facts have proven that minorities have lacked in that area. So I would love to employ, love to enhance, AKA elevate um, people of color and bring them into rooms with me so that way they can elevate themselves as well. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I think that's very, very important. Um, when it comes to VA, you said you made a thousand to five thousand dollars a month. There are some people right now, and then let me ask you this question: Did, did this business or your full time job um, did that help you get out of the little bit of debt that you did have? So actually, before I started, I had paid off my debt before I started my business. So really? I had my whole. I feel like everyone goes through it. Every entrepreneur, like you read, think real rich, rich dad, right. poor dad. Right, right. So. That probably happened two years before everything. So mm. I I just remember I had maybe five hundred dollars in like my checking account. I'm just like, what is life? Like it was so many different experiences where it was becoming costly. So I literally wrote everything down. Like I wrote down all of my debt mm. um, and how much money I wanted to see in my account every single month. Like I was in a complete isolation period. Like I was watching no TV. I was doing a lot of fasting. And again, I only had about thirty thousand dollars in debt. So I believed it was achievable. Yeah. But I was at I was making maybe fifty two thousand dollars in my career. Okay. Uh, which for me, I just needed another income. So I had a little brand ambassador job that was paying very well. So I was able to pay off my pay off my car, student loans, credit card debt pretty quick. I want to say 13, 13 months, maybe 13 months. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this question, uh, because most ladies in that age bracket using your 20s at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? I was in my 20s. Um, what what made you be like, all right, cool. I want to be debt free. I don't mm-hmm. want to have any debt. And I want to start a business. Like, what shifted in your head to make you go that route? So when I started my debt-free journey, I was still engaged. So a part of me was just like, I don't really want to bring debt into the marriage. So let me go ahead and, you know, because it wasn't a lot. Right. And right. I know a lot of people have, like, six figures in debt. Yeah. Definitely. I didn't have—I was very strategic. I was making sure I wasn't in that situation. Okay. But I also was thinking, like, I don't really want to bring debt into the marriage at the time. So I wanted to figure out, like, how can I pay off this debt before we tie the knot? Didn't really happen, but the debt's gone. <laughs> well, it I mean, still worked both out. Of them, both of them going. He going and the debt gone. <laughs> so it worked out still. But um, but yeah, and then um, I just started to read more, uh, just read more about people. Like, mm. again, Think Grow Rich is probably one of my yep. favorite books. And just hearing different stories about people who've been able to do well for from a business perspective. Yeah. And I always tell people, you don't have to recreate the wheel. Like, if you really want it to be successful— Personally, I think the bar is very low. Yeah. Like the bar is, if people really wanted to be yeah. multimillionaires, if they wanted to be their best best selves, they could by just improving every day. Ooh. Like you can literally research how you want to do everything Ooh. on Google. Come on. People just aren't consistent. They're not. And that's what makes me probably different than most people. When people always ask me, you know, how I got to where I, I was doing, I was consistent on Instagram even when I had 2,000 followers. Wow. Even when I only had two, 10 people in my lives, I was still delivering like I had 150 people in my lives. Yeah. So I think consistency will always be perfection every single time. But people can't be consistent. They can't be consistent for seven to 10 days. If you if they don't get results after seven to 10 days, they're ready to quit. Me, I just pivot. So I don't even acknowledge things that didn't go right because I'm, I'm enjoying the process too. So let me try something else. Let me try something new, which I enjoy being an entrepreneur, which I feel like I don't necessarily get that with my nine to five. Mm. Um, it's it's more so mundane. I kind of know what to expect, but I do enjoy like putting out fires as a business owner. So with you having a nine to five, and we talked about this pre-show and I, I kind of messed with you a little bit just to get you warmed up. Hmm. But I am curious though, uh, for my people watching, um, I'm really big on entrepreneurship and ownership. Yeah. I do believe that, especially within the minority community, we are some of the most creative people, but we don't own what we create. Yeah. We were created, and then unfortunately, someone else will come and own it. Mm-hmm. Let's look at it. And when you watch the NBA, the most creative basketball players are who? Black people. Absolutely. Some of the most creative football players, some, because I mean, I'm still a Tom Brady friend, and my brother is white. <laughs> he is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but some of the best football players are black. 
You know, we, we, we are great creators. I was doing the hair industry. I was doing some research on the hair industry. Uh, the hair industry is about an $800 billion industry. Mm -hmm. uh, but African-Americans, black people, um, we, I think it's a, out of all the hair industry, close to like, I think it's like 60%, 65% of the stylists are black, right? But we don't even own 10% of the industry. That's insane. But we consume nearly 60% of the industry. Absolutely. So it's like, wow, wait, I'm looking at your hair. Great. Did you do your hair? Or you no. had someone else do it? No. Was she don't. a sister or a white sister? Oh, she's a sister. See, so I'm saying. <laughs> so a black sister did that. But the question is, do black sisters own, own correct. that stuff? Now, yeah. some lady, yeah, I own my shop. Cool, I got you. Yeah, you, you own your shop. Do you own the building your shop is in? Exactly. Do you own the hair products that levels you're using? To it. Yeah, there's, there's levels to it. And I was like, man. And so I'm curious to you, you own a business, mm -hmm. but you also have a nine to five job. Correct. Why? When you said, because business wise, you make well over six figures on the business side of the mm -hmm. VA business, right? Yeah. So why still, if you're doing very well over here, why still have a nine to five? Which I'm not upset with it at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm doing it because I, I have the capacity to do so. I can do it. And then also, um, within my virtual assistant business, mostly everything is delegated for the most part, right? Mm. So owner, CEO, I have a director of client services, I have an operations manager, I have my own personal assistant, I have a social media assistant, wow. and then I have VAs who are delegated to clients. Do I still have to put out fires? Yes, every now and then. But it doesn't take away from everything else that I have going on in my life. And then my the same kind of with the, my nine to five, I feel like they're paying for a certain skill set um, with the industry that I'm working in. So some days I'm working long hours, some days I'm not working as long. So I'm able to do both, but in my head it's still all temporary for the long-term goal. Again, I don't, I don't dream of labor at all. Like, <laughs> don't dream of labor at all. I, I want a vacation for the rest of my life, but I, it's certain things I still want to be able to put in place. Mm -hmm. To um, for me to feel completely comfortable, mm, I want uh, things to be a little bit more passive for me as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we we're working towards that. So you have a system, pretty much. Yes, like I do you, have a system. But you don't have a date yet, though. A date as in dinner date? No. A date. date as oh. In. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I skipped ahead. Wow. <laughs> Cle clearly, that was triggering for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I was like, wait, what are you talking about? But I got dates. What you mean? <laughs> a date. So it's a funny date because of when you're going to transition. So it's funny because my day was technically earlier this year. I remember I had said that maybe last year, but it's certain goals that I want to reach beforehand. So what's m certain goals? So it's like you're at the capability of doing it now. Mm -hmm. But what I hear from you is I do hear a little bit of fear, just a little bit. Okay. And I could be wrong, but I do hear a little bit of fear. Because you're very successful and you got it, but I also hear like you got a lifestyle that you want to maintain. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And and that lifestyle will probably have to be on pause a little bit if you transition full time to scale your business bigger. For sure. And I think it's also important because my business is still fairly new. new. Yeah. Um, the last two years, people have done very, very well in business. So mm -hmm. I was in a very good position. So now that um, they're proposing that there may be a recession. Mm -hmm. Let's see how my business is able to nav navigate doing a different climate or a different economic climate mm -hmm. um, and see how we come out for that. So again, it, my nine to five is giving me a little bit of a cushion um, that's kind of safe right now, but mm -hmm. I would like to experience certain things before I say I'm gonna be a complete entrepreneur. No, I, I agree. Um, I agree with being wise mm -hmm. and making wise steps, but I also do believe that things will always be changing in America. You're right. So we gotta have a date and mm -hmm. you gotta have a number. If I was guessing, you've changed that number and that date several times. Yes, I have. So what I'm saying is I think you should have a date and a number if you do not want to continue working full time. Yeah, when my husband marries me, that's what I'm gonna be done. She is single, brothers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can slide in the DMs. If you're rich. If you're rich. What's rich to you? I mean, this I don't want to say a number. I don't want to say a number. 
We gonna get to that. I feel, I feel y'all, like y'all know. Y'all, 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 y'all know. Y'all, if y'all I, feel, I feel y'all through the camera. They was like, oh lord, she done went the wrong place. She okay. did. They gonna drag me. First oh, of all, no, I, no, first no, of no. all, so let's let's pause. Let's pause. Let's pause right there. You know, <laughs> for all y'all, this is gonna be good. But no. For all y'all who are just now tuning in, man, I have this amazing queen um, here at the table who wants a rich man. Okay. Um, and okay. you know what? One of the greatest things to honestly build, well, let's be real, um, is real estate, is is ownership. And so I definitely want to spend this time. That was a great pivot. Thank you. Um. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to spend this time and make sure that y'all are aware and reminded of my friends over at Church Hill Mortgage. They have uh, financed all of my real estate properties, and they will continue to finance all of my investment properties and personal homes. Um, y'all know me. I'm not a fan of debt, but I am definitely okay with mortgages um, being a debt because, I mean, hey, n- 95% of American people are not going to have three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000, a million dollars sitting around to go purchase a home. And Churchill understands that. And y'all know I teach no debt but a mortgage. And so that means you got to have someone who will manually underwrite your mortgage because you may not have a credit score or you may not have any open trade lines uh, like myself when I um, open up my mortgage. And so Churchill is the best in the industry. They're going to give you a low, low interest rate. Uh, they're going to teach you how to marry the house and date the rate, because right now America's rate, it is pretty high, but they're going to teach you how to get into your home and how to, the process of how do we get that rate lower here in the near future. Also, they will give you an extra $5,000 to go on top of your earnest money to make you a pretty much guaranteed buyer when you go to your seller to let them know, hey, in today's day and time with things being rocky and funny, they have already did all the manual underwriting, um, all of the back end stuff to make sure that I am a guaranteed approved person. And so if we back out for any reason, you'll be able to ke- uh, keep the, my earnest money and the extra $5,000. So it makes you a solid buyer. And so I get it. Right now is a interesting season because of the high interest rates right now. But Churchill is definitely the one because they have the lowest interest rates on the market. Um, and they're walking you through the whole process and teaching you the whole process of how to get the right loan for your dream home. Um, and I told my I told myself the other day, I said, all right, if I'm not married, um, if I don't find my wife by the end of this year, I bought my dream car, the Bentley, right? I'm gonna go build my dream home. And that's a that's a that's a big boy. And Churchill's gonna they're gonna they're gonna do it. And so I, my goal was to not was to build my wife her dream home. Uh, but I'm tired of waiting. You know what I'm saying? I, I need my thing. I want a pool in my backyard. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to walk around my house, you know, naked with some glass. You know what I'm saying? I just I just want to have a good time in my own home. Uh, and so Churchill is going to uh, be the person who finances my home with, of course, uh, my 20, 30 percent down. Um, so check them out. They are an amazing uh, Christian organization who are helping people, whether you have low credit, 550, 565, 80, all the way up to 800, all the way down to no credit. Check them out. Go to anthonyneal.com for slash Churchill. Uh, before we took a pause. <clears throat> nah, we won't go there. We won't go there right now. We won't go there right now. Because I, I want to help the people first before, yeah, before we entertain it. the people. Yeah. <laughs> we can edit that out. <laughs> oh no, we ain't editing that one out. Because I already know what your that. comment section will be like. Oh no, you, we gonna give you a chance to clean it up. Okay. But we ain't editing that part out. Okay. Cause my team already know. My squad already know. My people, my community is like, oh no, she went there. <laughs> but real talk, someone watching is saying, you know what? I am an accountant or I am a customer service rep at mm-hmm. the call center right now. Um, I like this, and I'm trying to pay off debt. Okay. I'm trying to buy a house. Um, I'm trying to get married. I just interviewed a couple, and there's, he's actually not a couple. I interviewed a young guy right before you came in, actually, and he is um, raising money or working and saving his money to get married, right? So what you're teaching is solid. I love the fact that you can make extra thousand, five thousand dollars a month on the side, mm-hmm. right? Uh, doing this on the side. What's the first step? Like if if they're watching this right now. Clearly, it's getting your course. And you guys, you can go to, let me give you the, the link right now. You can go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash VA bootcamp. Again, that's anthonyoneal.com VA, uh, dot com forward slash VA bootcamp. The link will be in today's show notes uh, because I think that's the very first step. They got to sign up for your class. And it's very affordable. It's $247, you guys. I mean, $250. I want you to think about this. 
if I told you you can make $1,000 a month, up to $5,000 a month, within a matter of, let's say, let's be real, within a matter of three to six months, mm -hmm. and all you gotta do is just pay $250, I'm giving you that, I'm giving that $247. I'm gonna make that investment to myself. Because watch this, you can go drive for Uber. You're giving Uber something, you're giving them gas Absolutely. and wear and tear on your car. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You, you can go drop off uh, groceries, you're giving up your time, you're giving up gas, you're giving up wear and tear on your car. And then your car's gonna be smelling like food and chicken and turkey and stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you're making an investment. Why not make an investment into yourself with something that can grow and really, really win, because if you're smart, let me tell you how to win. She ain't gonna like it when I say this, but you're gonna turn into another one of her. So you're gonna take her course, grow it, and then get other people up, up underneath you, and you teach people how to do what you did as a single mom. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So that's the first step I think you need to take. $247, take your course. That's a no-brainer. With that course also comes a community? Yes. What's in that community? So the community is going to probably give, it's going. It's way worth more than $250, the community in itself. So we're providing weekly job opportunities that we've searched and looked for. So I'm in a position now where I've kind of the go-to person within the virtual assistant space. So people, I have friends and family that will reach out to me and say, hey, I need a virtual assistant. I don't work with friends and family. So those opportunities, even though I have very, very successful people that I know of, I just pass them along to people in my community, as well as looking for different opportunities online. Um, and then any questions you have, we talk throughout the day, and we also hold each other accountable, because a lot of people start courses, a lot of people start businesses, and they're not profitable. So we are there to support them through that journey. Um, we do quarterly happy hours, so in December I'll be doing um, a virtual happy hour, do some giveaways, and it's really not an opportunity to talk about business, but just create this community and this network of people um, who started a business, and they may not have anybody else in their corner that may be an entrepreneur. And how many people are in your business? Uh, in my community, over 3,000. I mean, yeah, business, yeah, mm -hmm. in your community. 3,000 people. Over 3,000. 3,000 virtual assistants mm -hmm. who took your course, and they're trying to grow, excel, and just do bigger and better. They're doing. They're up. Um, t uh, mm. She said they're doing. <laughs> okay, all right, they're doing. Okay, cool, great. So once they uh, take this course, um, join this community. What do you think is preventing people from once they um, take your course, go through the whole process, what's, what are you seeing preventing them from going from course to getting their first client? That's easy, fear. Fear. And the reason I say that is because people will get on my call mm -hmm. and that was to be the first thing they mentioned. Annalisa, how do I get over the fear of putting myself out there? Because this is a business. Mm -hmm. So with any business, you have to market yourself. Mm -hmm. So how am I supposed to know about your business if I don't see it anywhere online? Wow. But you're describing it as an online business. Right. Right? So even putting yourself on social media, people have a fear of putting themselves out there because they care what, what other people think. Okay. I don't care what nobody thinks. Right. I'm gonna do me regardless. Right. So how, working through that process with them is the tricky part. Ooh. Like doing that mindset work. Um, and Like why are you afraid? Why do you care what someone else thinks they can't pay your bills? That don't make sense to me. Why do you care about somebody else that doesn't, not an entrepreneur, they don't even know what a VA is, like, why does that person hold so much weight? So mm -hmm. generally, we walk through that process and talk through that conversation mm -hmm. because can they be VAs? Absolutely, they do the work every single day, but they're not being paid for it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that come to my program, they're doing that work for free for their families mm -hmm. and not getting paid for it, right? Mm -hmm. So this is an opportunity for them to actually be able to make some really good money. Yeah. There have been people who've been able to replace their nine to five with their virtual assistant business. So they're, the options are really endless, but to actually get there, you have to mentally be there first. <sighs> And they not they they aren't always there, and it's always I don't want to put myself out there on social media, or how do I start an online business? But I don't want my face on the business, right? So talking them through that process and, and giving them their options, because it I mean sometimes you are able to network, um, and you don't have to be online, but you're making it harder on yourself. Yes, I always tell people social media you get access to so many different people. Yeah, I would have never met you if I not at all right if we didn't follow each other on, on Instagram. So. Mm -hmm. When you're starting a business, an online business, and you don't want to be on social media, you don't want to be on Instagram, you don't want to be on Facebook, you are making it harder on yourself. You can get out the house. I don't want to leave my house. Mm. You I don't want body? to. I'm a homebody, 1,000%. Mm. I love being in the comfort of my own home. Mm. So, But there are people out there that are okay with going to networking events and working in the room. That's not Annalisa. So I'm going to mm. market. Social media. I use social media as a tool to bring business to 
elevated assist to yeah. my virtual assistant course. So I try to get people in the, the state that use social media as a tool. I'm not telling you to post your personal life. I rarely per post anything really personal. It's always a purpose of why I'm posting something, right? Agreed. So getting them in that mindset to help take their business to the next level. Because if they reach out to me and say, Annalisa, I don't have a client yet. The first thing I want to say is, did you do this, this, and this? This is all the homework in the course. Yeah. And if you say no, we got a problem. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't, I don't want to go back and forth of what I've, I've already given you the blueprint. So, no. Listen, I, I think where you are is brilliant. And I think what you're doing is going to help a lot of people out. Because I'll tell you, I want to be Pledis. I want to help more people make more money so mm -hmm. they can get out of debt quicker. Absolutely. And this is a no-brainer. I agree. And from what I hear from you, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you're the expert in the VA space, mm -hmm. I'm not. I talk about that bag and keep a bag. <laughs> Period. You know what I'm saying? Um, but if you're on the computer, like for example, I just hired my cousin to be my assistant. Mm -hmm. Never, she's never been an assistant. And she was typing already. She was sending emails already. Yep. And she was booking appointments to meet with her because she worked in social services. I said, well, dang, you're already sending emails. You're already booking appointments specifically for you and for your people who are coming to meet you. That's what I need. Mm -hmm. I just need to switch it up. Send emails on my behalf. Yep. Make and book calendar events for me and my team. You know, and there's some other stuff. And she was nervous. But then when she went, because my mom is an executive assistant um, for the superintendent out in California, and she went to spend a week with my mom, she's like, oh, this is easy. Mm -hmm. And she's making almost $15,000 more than she was making on her job. And she's at home. And she can, what I, here's now, now let me be honest with you though. Okay. As the business owner, I do be like, dang, she be at her daughter's dance stuff working. Mind your business. <laughs> Mind your business. I be like, I be like, dang, where, I, be like, I be calling where you at? I'm at the game. Are you sending emails at the game? Yes. Yes. I might be on the beach working. What's the? What is the problem? See, here's gonna be the problem, CJ, <laughs> Alex. You gonna be on the beach <laughs> in a bikini? <laughs> All them guys looking at you like, hey. But the work's getting done. <laughs> but the work's getting done. That should that should be the only thing. That Alex, happens. I need to calm down, Alex. <laughs> You're not a VA. <laughs> <laughs> remote, remote, what that mean? I'll be calling I'll be calling Alex and his baby be bad there. I'll be like, God, no. But you know what though? I think the future is changing. Absolutely. I was um I'm in um Success Magazine this month and y'all should check it out. We're going to drop the link to Success Magazine. Actually, um I wish I had it. Um uh, I, we can't get it, but mm. um do we have one copy down here? Do we have one Alex? I mean, uh, CJ? Uh, you left it? Yeah, I took it out of my bed. You took it out your bag too? All right, cool, great. Um it, I'm in Success Magazine and they asked me about the future of working from home. And it was like, "Yo, can you build wealth?" working from home. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you actually could if you're smart because this is a prime example of Absolutely. how you build wealth working from home. You have a nine to five job that you probably, if you're, how, how apply this? And this is not your situation because I don't know, right? But I know there's one guy, well, we interviewed Steven, Steven, what's his name? Steven Motivate. Steven Motivate. He works a full-time job, mm -hmm. right? So they pay him for 40 hours a week. He says, I don't work 40 hours a week at home. He said, because I'm at home, I'm gonna give them a good solid 15 hours, 20 hours, because I'm gonna get all of my work done in maybe like one day or two days. Yeah. Then the other days, I'm gonna work my business. But now if my job calls me and says, hey, we need to do something, then I gotta know I gotta pivot real quick, handle that. He was like, the problem is with most people is when they're home working, they don't maximize that opportunity. Right. And I was like, yo, that's, that's smart. So that's why I pick on my guys, because they all work from home. They spend one week with me here, but it's true. Like, as long as you get the work done, I'm not going to give you more work to get 40 hours. Absolutely. Because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. You know? But, like, if you get the work done, and, and it, here's the thing. I told him, if you can't get the work done in 40 hours a week, we got a problem. Absolutely. But if you get it done in 20, that's pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? So You're do efficient. your thing. You're efficient. So I think that you can build wealth if you are smart, which is why y'all have to get her course. Now, real quick, before we pivot to this nonsense you said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
because you are so smart and wise, do you offer people like one-on-one -on -one calls with you? Yes. To, to where they can just say, hey, listen, here's what I'm thinking, but I don't know. Like before I take a course or when I take a course, how should I do this? Get some advice from you. You do do that. Yes, I do do. I usually offer one-on-one -on -one calls. Okay. Um, I, they are booked out sometimes because so many people want to get on my calendar. I would just challenge people to come with your questions. Okay. Know what you want to get out of this conversation so it can be a productive conversation, but I do offer that for people. Cool, great. So like I said, I want you to go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash VA boot camp. Um, and we'll make sure on that page that you all get access to her course, um, get access to her one on one. Now, listen, one on one with someone of this caliber, it, there will be a fee. I don't know what that fee is. Um, but I mean, if y'all get one on one with me, there's a fee. You know, you get one on one with any type of coach, a successful person, it's a fee. But look at it. You know, look at it. This is an investment into creating. Uh, a financial situation for you that can change your life. I mean, she went from making 1,000 to 5,000 in a matter of two months, 60 days. Yeah, and now yeah. I make five figures a month within the agency. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she make five figures a month within her agency. Y'all, what I'm trying to understand, you don't need $88,000 a month to make a million dollars a year. Think about that. It's eighty-eight thousand dollars a month, five figures, to make a million dollars a year, seven figures. That could be you, for two hundred and fifty dollars. And let me be real with you: it's not just taking, spending the two hundred fifty dollars to get the education, because there's two things that I really say, I really teach. You get the knowledge, and then you have wisdom. A lot of people think wisdom is about the information that they receive. No, wisdom is how do you use the knowledge that you receive. Absolutely. And so you can get the knowledge, you can get some wisdom. The other side of wisdom is how are you applying what you've learned? So you can spend all this money, but if you don't apply it correctly, if you don't get involved in the community, ask the right questions and do what uh, she's teaching you, you're not gonna make that kind of money. Absolutely. Okay? And Executor. so you gotta, you gotta execute, you know, you gotta execute. So uh, why wait for a man to build wealth? How about you have your wealth when a man comes and then you may quit your situation, but all the wealth that you built, now you can take that wisdom and knowledge with him and y'all build something even better. Period. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, she said she want a rich man. Okay. <laughs> rich man. Rich in personality. No, 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 don't, 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 oh. don't, don't fix that now. Okay. Okay, so here's the question. I ask this to all the successful ladies who come on my show. I've asked Ellie, that's your girl. What up, Elle? Um, I've asked <laughs> Terry Egeoma. What up, T? <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? I just asked, what's her name who was on the show yesterday, y'all? Um, Dr. Uh, Nicole. Yeah, do, yeah, do, do, coach, not doctor, coach Nicole. She she a doctor too. She got all the education like you. Here's a question <laughs> that I ask every single person. You know what I'm about to ask you? Mm -mm. Okay, here we go. You make five figures a month. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Could you date a guy who only makes five figures a year? Could no. you date a guy? Dang. Oh, I'm sorry. I said that too quickly. I'm lying. <laughs> I could. <laughs> I could. I don't know so why. So you I'm trying not... to tell me right now? Yeah, I could. That you? No. Here's a question. And be real. I've had ladies say no. I've had ladies say yes. I mean, um, Coach Nicole said no. She couldn't. She said she tried, and because of her lifestyle, she could not do that. And that's what I wanted to mention. So, so you couldn't date a school teacher? I, it, based on what I know about, I'm gonna, mm. Mm. So like, I'm not just dating someone based off their career, so let's start it there. Okay. Or just the money that they make. I okay. feel like it's levels to it. So you could be, you could be a school teacher, but you can have, a large real estate portfolio. Uh, but that's not the question that I So we used to talk about numbers. Just, just, right now we're talking about, can you date a school teacher who loves what he does? He feels it's his assignment, it's his calling. It is, um, I wanna stick with that. It is his assignment to be a school teacher, but he only makes, you know, let me raise that up a little bit because we did the math yesterday, and I, not yesterday, but with, with Coach Nicole, and the math could be anywhere between $25,000 and $67,000. So I wanna say, let's say, let's, let's give him 55. He makes $55,000 a year gross, school teacher, but he loves what he does. I love that for him, but I'm not the woman for him. Why are you not the woman for a man who is in his assignment and purpose and calling? I think for me that I can already see the challenges that may come up. What challenges? Just based off 
the things that I like and I'm able to do for myself. Like what? Give me one thing. Just being able to maintain myself. So Maintain here, yourself? I don't see nothing expensive here. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to look a little closer. Okay. Your hair? <laughs> everything. everything. Makeup, expensive. your nails? Everything. I mean, how so, about but some, and, a, and a school teacher can't help you get your hair done? So you said 55000 gross? Yeah. I don't think so. So you trying to tell... I don't, like, I don't know if he can... I don't even. I don't know if he's Mel's done. I don't even know if we're there yet. I don't know. So the only reason I say that is because I've dated people who've made around that amount of money, and all I'm going to say is the experience is different. So my challenge would be: if you make that amount of money without continuing to be in debt, are you still going to be able to treat me the way I want to be treated in certain like in going to different restaurants? If you know I like a certain a gift, are you going to be able to afford that? I don't want you to have to save your money for two years to be able to give me a gift. And I know I'm about to get dragged. And you know... Let me help you not get dragged. Okay, let's... <laughs> <laughs> what is it, I mean, what is it that, outside of the money, what is one thing you need from a man, though? No. Seriously, because everything you said was was on the money side of things. And I think that's why, and my, my community is not going to drag you, I'm just playing with you. They've never dragged anyone who said that's what they want because they respect <laughs> people. They've, my community's never... Has my community dragged people? The comment section, when that when that millionaire yeah. said that she wanted a nanny or she wanted but help in the house. she's a millionaire, though. They were not happy with that. But respectfully, and I can say this on my show, I really don't care about those people dragging or commenting yeah. because they don't understand. Oh, no, they're not there. The lifestyle of someone who has built something of that magnitude. Because I would have said, before I was making the kind of money that we're making now with, with my company, I would have said that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I would have been like, mm. No, that makes no sense. I remember when I once said, a Bentley? Yeah. No way. Why would I spend that much money for a Bentley? You right. know? But now I'm like, I mean, that's a fraction of, of what, what we make. So it's mm -hmm. like, I get that. So I don't really think that's dragging. I think it's just my community who has not evolved to that space yet. I would agree with that. But they're evolving. You know what I'm saying? Because my, my brother-in-law and sister have a nanny, a full-time nanny. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they got four kids trying to run a business. They need help. Absolutely. So I think, I mean, the teaching moment, before y'all start dragging people, just make sure that um, you think about what you're about to say, because I think sometimes we assume, sometimes we don't really know the full story, right? And here's what I've learned. As I'm evolving, uh, evolving with my money, everything comes back to the quality of my life and my family's life. What's that mean? Instead of me maybe cutting the grass and, ha and spending that time cutting the grass, I may hire someone. Instead of me having my wife quit her job and she's a full-time stay-at-home mom, when she may want to be like this amazing lady and run a business, how about we hire a nanny? You mm -hmm. know, how do we build a quality life? And someone very, very, which I can't say because I was in a private room with these, this amazing couple, but a huge couple, they sat down and told all of us young and up-and-coming people, it was like, hey, we focus on the quality of life. Absolutely. And that's beautiful. And the quality of life may mean we're going to hire people to do things that other people may look at like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. Like, you're lazy. Well, that's cool. I've built this billion-dollar situation, yeah. not because I'm lazy, but because I'm wise, and I've, I've focused on my time. And wealthy people, whew, I said this on my show before, and they dragged me for this one, so I'm going to be dragged with you. Okay. <laughs> wealthy people value time more than they value money. Absolutely. Every average everyday people will exchange their time for money. Mm -hmm. And wealthy people will exchange their money for time. Yep, I'm paying for convenience every time. Every day. Quality every of life. Every single time. Quality of life. So, me and you both there. We're on the same page now. Mm -hmm. My community, I love y'all, but I had, to, I had to teach that. So, they won't drag you. But I do, I do wanna ask that question though. I think there are a lot of good men who are overlooked who are school teachers today. But you are such a wise woman. What happens if you overlook that guy who was making 42,000, but he gets with you, he learns something new, now he's making 42 million. No, oh, and that's beautiful. That is beautiful. I just, I feel like at the age that I'm at. 31. 31. Still young. I, I would like to date someone that's somewhat already established in that space. And you mean he's already financially, financially well off mm -hmm. and a man of character and integrity. Yes. And I think you made a good point. And so 
if I'm living a certain lifestyle and he may make, you know, $55,000 a year, I don't want to be questioned about any of my decisions or purchases. So if I want to go buy me a G-Wagon tomorrow, I don't want to hear, well, that car is too much money. Mm, that's like... Do you think men have you experienced something like that before? Like oh, absolutely. Past? Like, give me that. Like, y'all just to more dinner? so. Like, even um, when I first wanted to get into, I was dating someone and I wanted to invest in real estate, and they were just like, "Oh, that's too much. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want a house hack? That doesn't make sense." They couldn't see the vision. Mm. And that was problematic for me. Um, because I, this is me transitioning in how I'm going to build wealth, yeah, generational yeah. wealth, right? Yeah. For my future family. Yeah. If you can't get on board for that, then that's that's concerning. That's a red flag. Yeah. yeah. So. So it doesn't sound like it's the money. It just sounds like more so the the men who you've dated in the past were weren't aligned with your vision. Absolutely, and I think, and in regards to my comments earlier about having really good dates. I think I'm able to have really good chemistry with people, but that doesn't mean we're compatible in life. Ooh. So those okay. are two different things. Good dates, as far as in the dates were fun. Yeah, they're fun. People. We're laughing. Yeah. You but treated me the very well. Wasn't there. Well, the chemistry was there, but when you when you go through having conversations and you realize their lifestyles, like your morals may not be the same. Okay. When you're talking over dinner, like things shift and you realize that does your life really, really marry up? Mm -hmm. So for me, I think chemistry is super important, but I think compatibility is also important. That's so good. So when the chemistry dies, There's can we still live together right, under right, the right. same roof and like each other? One moral you need to align with with your guy. Um like one, one thing. Like a huge thing is like mindset. And in regards to just having faith in general, I cannot be around a pessimistic person at all. Like I'm always looking at situations like the cup is half full. So I need for them to be, I can't be around a negative person. So mm -hmm. if I feel like if you're spiritual or you're a godly person that you don't necessarily live or subscribe to that negative idea 24 seven. I love it. So I couldn't be around per, per, a person like that, but I'm really big on personality and being able to hold a, hold a conversation too. So. Mm. Okay, here's a question. Yeah. <laughs> here's a good question. <laughs> this is so good. So my philosophy, I tell men, I don't care how much money you have. I don't care if you're making a million dollars a year, $50,000 a year, and especially if you're making less than 50,000, you shouldn't even be dating like this, right? But um, I, t um, I tell men, don't spend no more than $100 on your first date. I need a drink. Uh, more than $100? Mm -hmm. my, okay. My thing is, um, I, and, and I'm let you give your response, right? <laughs> and my thing is, I think spending money on a woman is the easiest thing I can do. Yeah. Being creative and being, um, so where I'm looking for, like listening to you. Absolutely. And saying, all right, cool. Let me create an experience mm -hmm. that she will leave that experience knowing, wow, okay. he put time and effort into this date. Not just call my assistant, book a restaurant, drop $300 on dinner, mm -hmm. and we go home. To me, I think, to me... There are some ladies who ask them, take me, take me to on a nice dinner date for the first date. And I'm like, that doesn't show effort for most successful men financially because it, that's the easiest that's thing easy. to that's do. That's a good point. Easiest thing to do. You don't got to spend $100, I don't think. But your first impression was, I need a drink. I know. But now that I think... <laughs> Because one, I don't know how much money is being spent on me when I go on dates. I actually, I don't that's know. A lot. I don't know how much. That's a lot. You look at the menu and you see how much you're ordering at least. Oh, I guess I do. Exactly. But. Come on now. Mine is still probably low cost anyways. Low cost. I don't eat a lot of stuff, so it's just like limited. What, you a vegan? Something like that? Yeah. So. But y'all more expensive. It depends on where you take us. My point is actually. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to say this here. I'm going to say you don't have to spend $100, but right. make it memorable. So for me, Absolutely. like, don't take me to the movies. We can't even talk. Right. Like, I don't think that's a good. But, like, my last day, like, we went to go play air hockey, you know, pool, bowling. Yeah, yeah. Like, I like to be competitive and do activities. That probably wasn't an expensive. Not at all. Like, if you wanted to take me to the fish spot in the hood, but the food's really good, we can go there, too. You, you'll you go to the fish spot in the hood. Yeah, if the food's good. yeah. As long as we're not dodging for bullets, yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, yeah, if the food's good and the conversation's good, like, I'm, I'm more so about what's the overall experience, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? 
Um, cause I mean, I can buy my own, I can buy my own dinner. I can go to a fancy restaurant if I wanted to, but like, how are you going to make me feel? And I think that's the thing that I'm teaching men. And when I tell ladies that sometimes I just stop and be like, okay, cool, great. Would you do it? They'd be like, no, a hundred dollars. Yeah. And then they get, they get turned off. Like if the guy says, yo, I'm on a budget. And so we're just going to do a budget date. And I tell guys that, man, don't say budget. Oh, please. Okay, I'm glad you said that. Don't 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 it's say budget, because I get it. Yeah. I get what you're saying. But ladies, you know what I'm saying, which I don't understand why that's a turn off. Because I'm I'm gonna teach my daughter any man who says he's on a budget actually should be a turn on. Now the next question is just watch how he's moving with his budget. Absolutely. Because it's like if if he's on a budget because he's broke. That's okay. That's the conversation. If he's on a budget because he's like, "Yo, I'm gonna be wise with my money, and mm-hmm. I don't really know you just yet, so I'm gonna give you this great experience, but I ain't dropping a hundred dollars on you because why show up for tryouts and I can't show up to finals?" Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, why, why treat all my girlfriends with 100, 200, 300 dollar dates, but get to my wife and my kids? And because I wasn't wise with investing my money into real estate, yeah. Because I wasn't wise investing my money in starting a small uh, a VA business for 247 dollars. <laughs> um, but I spent all my money to impress this good, good looking woman, you know, then I get to my wife. I don't have no wealth built. I don't have no savings yeah. account. I don't have none of that because all my girlfriends, you right. All my girls who ended up being just friends got my bag. You're right. And also, but sh- listen to the girl and what she wants. Like everybody's not going to be in Elisa. They're not going to be okay with going to the fish spot in the hood. So and that's true. You need to know her. You're the first person who said, I'll go to the fish spot. Oh my hood. goodness. Yeah. It's the, if the food is good. Man, listen, ask, ask my boy CJ. Every time I went out of Fayetteville, when I was living in Fayetteville, North Carolina, there was this restaurant called Mama C's. Mm-hmm. In, I wouldn't say the hood, but it wasn't on the nice side of town. And it was right next to a club. Bullet holes in it, but the best food in the city. Get the food and go. The best. I would take my celebrity friends. When they came into town to chill out with me and do events with me, I'd take them to Mama C's. Mama only had one, you know, she she could barely walk. Okay. But that food was, but I'm talking about the sweet tea have lemonade. Oh, my God. The banana pudding. Oh, my God. And I remember taking <laughs> a young lady there for dinner, and she kind of like rolled her eyes a little bit. Like, what, what, what we doing here? But you know what? Because I brought so many people there, as soon as we walked in, it could be jam packed. She'll sit me down immediately. Babe, you want your same? Yes, ma'am. What does Queen want? She'll be looking at me. I don't know. As soon as she tastes that food, though, changes. If the food's good and the conversation's good, it's a good day. Oh, yeah. I ain't no boring guy. I ain't no boring guy. I'm just, I'm just saying. So you don't have to spend $100. Okay. You don't have to be a rich man. Okay. I feel like it's all about the experience and the quality. I get you. But I, I would definitely say respectfully. Do you want a wealthy man? And let me say this up front, because I'm going to say this before you say something so you don't get the people all upset. I think that there's nothing wrong with a woman desiring a wealthy man. Just know you may miss out on a good man, and it's gonna, it may take you a longer time mm-hmm. to get that man because now your, your pool just went shorter. And I only said it because I remember there was this amazing lady, amazing, beautiful lady. And, and I mean, I was making... $30,000 a year. I approached her. We went out on a date. I couldn't take her to where she really wanted to go. I took her to TJI Fridays. I'm going to keep it a buck. She wanted to go to Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Mm-hmm. And I saw her in her face. like, we got TJI Fridays. I'm killing them ribs. And she's like just picking over the food. Like, I could tell she's ready to go. And so when we went home, I dropped her off. The next day, I called her. Yo, how was the date? Can we do it again? She's like, I'm going to be honest with you. No. Dang. You know, I was like, why? She said, I, I, she said, and she said this in a very respectful, loving way. She's like, I don't think that you're in a position to provide me with what I want at this time. And I was like, what do you mean by that? She said, respectfully, you don't make enough money. It was at TGI Fridays. Like, I came home and I was worried about my stomach was going to be bubbling. I was like, what? I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> and so she, we stopped talking. Fast forward. She see me like six years later. Hey, big kid. Exactly. <laughs> She's like, you still taking people to TJI Fridays? I said, I'm not, honestly. <laughs> I'm honestly not. She was like, oh, okay. She was like, well, I mean, you want, you want, you want to do that second date? I said, <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Take you know, care. <laughs> because it's like, I think sometimes I think ladies miss out on, I, I say, I tell ladies, I have a new podcast coming out in January, my boy uh, Jeremy Wright called Becoming Husband. And I said that I think that a lot of ladies miss out on good men because they 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 skip over the potential. 
And I said, listen, man, don't date a man for his potential, but date a man for the fruit of his potential. If you okay. see the brother working okay, and you see the fruit of it, that brother's going to be there. Because what I was doing a year, we, I mean, we make that and then some a month, right? And I'm like, skip over it. But you can say the same thing about me. I tell the world knows, my tribe knows, she got to have the Bible and the booty. So that means if she don't have a booty, then I'm, I may miss out on a good woman. And I got to be okay with <laughs> and that. And you've accepted that. I have. I've okay. accepted the fact that I made. If she don't have the Bible, if she if she she can have the, the booty, the body, the, all that stuff, chemistry can be great. But if she don't believe in God, I just can't rock with that. But I feel like you have a bigger pool. What? Of people with Bible and booty. Bible, booty, and what's the other one there, Alex? The brains. I like that BBBL. Is Bible, that... booty, brains, and love. You have a huge pool to pull from. The brains part? Mm -mm. Oh. Yeah, the brains part because I'm like you. She has to have an entrepreneurial mindset to understand that she's dating a man that is very business and passionate. Now, I also have to be mature enough to understand that, hey, I got to create time and space. Absolutely. But I also need a woman that's understanding like, hey, like we don't work in J July and December for the most part. So like those months, you're going to really be like, yo, wait, what? Like mm -hmm. you got all this time. So it comes in, in ebbs and flow. Yeah. So, you know, it's all good. But yo, man, we can talk about this all day long. Your, your perspective is different. Good dates, want a wealthy man. She said rich. And the only reason I, so as my quality of life improves, I feel like the quality of men that I attract, they're usually like in similar situations too. No, you attract men who are school teachers and police officers and, and, and you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. But I think you don't see them because you're not attracted to them. <laughs> well, read me. Read me fulfilled. What else you got? No, I'm just saying. I mean, it's, they're there. I think you have good men who are there. but it's, And again, there's nothing wrong with that because I've overlooked good ladies. I'm not going to lie because they didn't have a certain kind of shape. And, and I would definitely say, though, <laughs> I am evolving and I am starting to be more attracted to to. To, to different body types of ladies. I am. A little less booty. A little yeah, less. a little less booty. I, I am. You know, they, they still got to have the Bible, though. Yeah. Ladies? S still got to love God, you know. But, um, you know, but as I, I think as I'm evolving and as I'm getting older at 38, I'm about to hit 40, and I'm like, well, maybe I don't. Maybe I shouldn't. But don't get it twisted, though. That Bible, the booty come. God have mercy. Shabbat. Bye -bye. I'll be married in six months. Listen, what's the name of this website? We are pushing y'all to, because I really want y'all to get this, this information from this amazing woman. Go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash VA boot camp. Um, it's $247 to take her course. Um, I promise you, Annalisa will bless your life. Uh, she was on my friend's uh, podcast before, and I always do research before I bring people onto my show. Um, we've been talking for months, and I was like, wait, let me just learn more. Let me look up some of your stuff. Let me see some other interviews, uh, because I, I, I value my community. Um, I value what we're building, what we're growing, and I just want to make sure we have the right people at the table to have mm -hmm. a real, relevant, and relatable conversation. Um, and um, I love what she's doing. And here's the thing, you guys. There's so much knowledge out there. There's no reason why you should be living paycheck to paycheck. I agree. I'm not saying that it's easy, but what I am saying is if you're willing to put in the work and put in the time, you can and you will be successful. Um, I, we both don't come from wealthy backgrounds. Um, I come from, you know, Fayetteville, North Carolina and San Diego, California. I come from two military um, families. One was in the Marines and one was in the Army. Um, you know, I, I don't come from wealth. My parents was like, you know, Annalisa's. That my, my dad said something the other day while we was on the golf course together. And he said, you know what, son, when I look at you, your wealth is different. My wealth is, I got $5,000 in that account. You know, my, my wealth is I have freedom. My wealth is I have a retirement check. My wealth is my son is healthy. And all that would be my wealth, but as, as well, we look at wealth differently. Mm -hmm. And when I look at today's day and time, I'm like, wow. My dad didn't teach me nothing about starting a business. He didn't teach mm -hmm. me nothing about building wealth. He said, yo, son, graduate high school, go to college, get a good job, 401k benefits, social security check, keep your credit score right, pay your bills, and you retire, and you at least retire with making three, $4,000 a month. 
I couldn't imagine that today. Me neither. And I am like, wow. But again, that's my father in their generation. And um, I think there's so much more out there for us, but we gotta get the knowledge. You know, God asked Solomon, what do you want? Solomon said, give me the knowledge and the wisdom that I can grow and expand. Get the knowledge. Go to anthonyneal.com forward slash VA bootcamp and watch you expand. We're gonna drop our information in today's show notes. Instagram, all that. We'll see you in the next show. Peace out.